Hi everyone, my name is Peter. Welcome to Our Ship Sound. In this video, I want to show you how you can go beyond playing just by chords and begin to add some improvised melodic elements to your playing. Some of what I'm going to say is similar to what I've already presented in my playing melodically video, but I think you'll find that this approach is a little bit more step by step and it's a little bit more accessible. So let me show you what I mean. First of all, I'm going to play something just by chords. I'm going to add some melodic elements to what I'm playing. Okay, so to improvise melodies, you need two things. One, you need ideas for what to play. And two, you need the technique and ability to be able to express those. Now, it's a little bit like uh, that same concept that I've talked some about, um, like where playing music is like a fluent second language, where you have ideas and you just communicate them without having to think too much about them. And I think uh, a really effective way to get there is to learn how to use just a small number of notes at a time. Because when you think about it, the way you learned your primary language was not all at once. You learned it bit by bit until you had a good grasp of the vocabulary. And I really like that same approach for music as well. So here's what I mean. I'm going to play something in the key of C major again, and I'm going to outline the chords with my left hand, and in my right hand, I'm only going to improvise melodies. But instead of trying to use the entire C major scale, I'm going to limit myself to just two notes, B and C. Here's what it would sound like. So a couple things about this approach. First of all, with two notes, with just two notes, it's easy to begin to hear what the notes will sound like and what their character is like. Now I'm not just playing B and C, I'm playing the first note of the C major scale and the seventh note of the, of the C major scale. And as I play with just these two notes, you begin to hear how the seventh note creates a tension uh, and an instability that resolves when it's, once it goes to the much more solid and stable first note. You begin to hear that playing just these notes together. Another point is that since I wasn't trying to work in a whole bunch of notes, I was able to focus more on playing interesting rhythms and playing them expressively as well. And one more thing is that as I was going through this, I, I was starting to get bored with just these two notes, but then of course B and C are, are available in other octaves as well. So I jumped up here and started going back and forth even playing them as octaves together. So that's a place that I probably wouldn't have gone to if I was worried about trying to get in all these other notes in the C major scale. So it actually opened up a possibility that I probably wouldn't have, have used if I was focusing on all the other notes. Now let's take it one step further and add the fifth note of the scale, which in the key of C major is G. Let's hear what this sounds like. So we begin to get a sense for what that fifth note sounds like, that it's solid, it's stable, it sounds good with either chord in the left hand, it even sounds good with either of the other two notes that I was playing in my right hand. So we begin to know what these notes are going to sound like even before we play them. And that's the advantage that as you're not just thinking G, B, and C, you can think the fifth, the seventh, and the one, and then those same sorts of relationships are going to transpose into any other key that you could play. For example, if I was going to play in the key of E flat, the fifth, seventh, and one would be B flat, D, and E flat. So those ideas are going to sound relatively the same. Here's what I mean.
So if you're wanting to go beyond playing just by chords and begin to improvise some melodies within your playing, I really like this approach for just taking a small number of notes and really getting to know them well and, and branching out from there. And that's the same concept that I've used in my full length piano training course. It's called Fluent Piano. It has six modules to take you through six small groups of notes. And um, it also has a lot of melodic examples to get you started with a lot of ideas to play. It has exercises to develop your finger strength and your speed to be able to play those ideas. It will also develop your left hand, develop your rhythmic ability, and develop your expressiveness as well. So it's kind of an all around approach to taking the next steps on piano. And I invite you to check out the first couple of videos completely for free. If you follow the link in this video or in the description below, it'll take you right to the course homepage and you can begin to get started with the course that way. So hope this video was helpful and uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.